Greetings. Today I want to talk to you about diabetes, heart in the arteries, and things that can be detected in your eyes early, and who should be providing that care for you so that you get the best of care. My associate Dr. Desai and I are here to discuss this. We'd like you to listen in. So Jay, um, we see a lot of patients and we do something called digital retinal imaging as a screening test to help detect early signs of eye disease. Do you, do you see many patients who have early signs of diabetes or heart in your eyes? And are they the same? Good question. What does happen with diabetes before it causes bleeding in the eye? Mm -hmm. It actually is notorious for accelerating hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, which is the reason why patients with diabetes do have a higher risk of heart disease. So our camera is able to zoom in the uh, blood vessels microscopically and before uh, we see bleeding, we can see the damage to your blood vessels. And what is that called? Nicking? Yes. Retinal atherosclerosis. So we take photographs. We offer our patients the opportunity of doing preventative care, which is what we do um, by using photography of the retina to detect early signs of heart in the arteries. And that also is a really big tip off to people who are about to develop diabetes. Right. Especially huh. when they get their family history. Okay. Because genetics is a huge factor. And what do you do for patients who are developing early signs of diabetes that you think would be good preventative care that perhaps they're not getting if they were to see a surgeon in a medical group? Good question. The first thing I do ask when I see a patient with diabetes, I like to know what their A1C is. It does measure how much blood sugar is bound to your red blood cells. Anything above a six and a half is diabetes. 5.7 to 6.4 is prediabetes. And the A1C above a 7 will greatly increase the risk of bleeding down the road. So by getting an idea, the key is to really get the uh, blood sugar better controlled early. Because if the blood sugar remains high for an extended period of time, you do run a risk of damaging your cells called metabolic memory causing bleeding. So some studies have suggested that in addition to early treatment of blood sugar control, Taking antioxidants can perhaps reduce the risk of retinal bleeding. Hmm. Okay. That's very interesting. So um, you do find that using preventative diagnostic techniques like digital retinal imaging, we're able to detect early signs of diabetes, one of them being through heart in the arteries, which is pretty much an epidemic, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Now, what about when a patient does have diabetes and it is doing some small damage to blood vessels in the eyes? Um, where do, if we, do you, do you normally monitor those people and, and, and try and get them to get it under control by recommendations? I do. I'll see the patient at least every three months, depending on the severity. I'll be proactive in addition to let them know to work with your physician to get your A1C better control earlier. I'll refer them to a dietitian. I'll refer them to a uh, a personal trainer to keep their weight down because combination of aerobics and weight training can help better regulate sugar much better. So you look at their whole health and try and coordinate with their primary care doctor. Correct. Now, so when a patient has diabetes, they have two choices. If they're in a group, a medical group, for example, the medical doctor, the primary care doctor may recommend them to a, uh, an ophthalmologist in the group because, again, they're in the group and they this is an issue today because of changes in medical care. Um, when you have big groups, doctors got to refer to other doctors that do the same thing in their group. Whether it's a better doctor outside or not who does better, very hard for them to refer out because it's kind of like trying to beat up your colleagues yeah. in your own business, and that's not going to fly well. So um, if they send them to an ophthalmologist in the group, um, is he going to do anything different than we do? No. You see, they'll do the same thing, and... If a patient needs surgical uh, intervention by a retina specialist, we know the signs to look for an appropriate time to uh, send to the retina specialist. So uh, That's interesting. So basically... It's duplication it, of service. It's yeah, duplication of service. So if, if, if you're a diabetic and you're being seen by your primary care physician, he says, well, you know, you really be, need to be seen by so-and-so in our group. You know, you, you, can, you have to respect your doctor that he wants to take care of you. But you can say, you know, I have my own doctor and I'll have my doctor send reports to you. You don't have to change doctors because he's in the group. He's not going to not like you because you didn't see the other guy in his group that they're making money together with. And that's what groups do. You have to do what's right for you and for your family. 
So in terms of preventative care, many, many patients see us as optometrists. In fact, the vast majority, almost 80% of the patients in America see optometrists first because we provide the broad scope of care. And that includes diabetes, right? That's right. Now, if you have a problem that requires surgical care, which is outside of our profession, we're going to send you to a retinal specialist, right? That's right. And we, we work with retinal specialists all the time. I do thousands of cases, especially in Yorkers. So going to a surgeon to be sent to another surgeon does not make any sense. And that's what happens in groups because that's all you'll find in a group of surgeons when it comes to eye care. Preventative pr practice doctors like us who are optometrists are not in medical groups. We're usually outside groups in large networks. But that's where you get the best preventative care. So when, you pee, when, you, when your medical doctor tries to say, well, you know, you need to see the doctor in our group, that's not correct. You need to be seen by the doctor that gives you the best care because whether you see an ophthalmologist in the group or an optometrist outside the group, when you need surgical care, if you do, we'll both be sending you to the same doctor, the retinal specialist. When it comes to preventative care, however, who does more thorough preventative care? We see you do, uh, us do, because uh, many times ophthalmology will see 30, 40 patients a day. Because they're they may, surgeons, they rush them. They they get rushed to, because they have to. And they may not have enough time to uh, discuss how to re reduce your blood sugar and the importance to uh, save your eyesight. And that's right. We do the preventative care. We work with patients on maintaining and reversing problems before it becomes an issue, so they never need the surgery. You're not going to get that from an ophthalmologist in a medical group. So if you're diabetic and you want diabetic care and you want preventative care. Don't be forced into feeling uncomfortable about seeing a good doctor outside the group, like us or someone similar to our practice. See a doctor you believe in, and your doctor is not going to not take care of you because you didn't run to the next doctor in the group that he likes. Understand that you get better care if you have care outside the group when it comes to diabetes. Is that correct? That's true, and plus we do take many medical insurance that will cover your visits anyway. That's right. There's no difference in terms of medical insurance. Yeah. Good point, Jay. That's right. Thank you. You're welcome.